Welcome back to Waterpark Rangers, let's play Pikmin 2! Last episode, we defeated the boss of Snagret Hole, the Piliated Snagret. And in this episode, we're going to be departing victoriously from this dungeon, with a full party of 100 due to the Queen Candy Pop Buds so that upped our population a bit. Um, ironically, I'm pretty sure the Glutton's Kitchen still killed more of her Pikmin. All thanks to that stupid Spotty Bull Bear. Honestly, they are just the worst. They're probably, yeah, they're... In terms of normal enemies, they're probably the most lethal. Or at least, definitely among the top three most lethal normal enemies. And over here, uh, we just got all our Pikmin flowered up. And I think we're just about done with this place. Yep, we can leave now. We have all the treasures. No, no, no reason to stay. I kind of like this boss's design, though. I think it looks pretty cool. It looks like a, uh, a chimera. I heard that word pronounced different ways. Like, I've heard it Kimura, uh, Chimera. Chimera. I'm pretty sure most of these are false pronunciations, anyhow. And... Okay, we lost 14. I think we lost 17 in Glutton's Kitchen. But these were more legitimate deaths. Like, this is a more difficult dungeon. I think it's worthy of a rating of, yeah. Uh, three and a half stars probably does it, does, probably does it justice. Just fine. Because of the boss and the burrowing snaggerets, and yeah, you get the idea. And yeah, also we're done with this area. We're finished with the Awakening Wood because we got all the treasures in it, and we got all the treasures in all of its dungeons. And I think now we're going to get a new percentage completion mark. 70%, okay. Uh, depending on how many bug bodies you're, you're uh, collecting in this uh, in the playthrough, you'll actually might have gotten 80% by now because they do add up. And look at Louie. See, this is what happens. I've almost never seen this before. Whenever your captain uh, gets KO'd in a dungeon, for the rest of the day... Or like it's KO'd in the overworld. For the rest of the day, they'll just fall face uh, they'll just fall face flat on the floor like that in front of the ship, and you can't really do anything to revive him. Unfortunately, you kind of just have to wait for the day to end, and then he'll crawl back miserably. Poor guy, Louis had it rough. <laughs> he hasn't been learning to command the Pikmin well. And that's why he ended up in such dire straits. All right, I had just cut ahead up a, a little bit, and uh, that really does it. As you can see, uh, this mold has covered up the berry plants, so the risk the whisker pills won't be eating from it anymore. And that does it for this uh, area. We're never going to be coming here again. I like the Awakening Wood. It's tough to say if I have a favorite area in this game. It might be Perplexing Pool, but I really like all the areas to one in one in one way or another. In Pikmin One, I'm, I definitely like Distant Spring more than the others. It was my favorite area. And we'll blast off. Never have to come back here. Although, um. One reason you might want to come back here normally, and I just, this is a general recommendation, is this is the best area probably for growing Pikmin, due to on later days, the size and amount of pellet posies that appear. There are some, there's even a pellet posy that has a 20 pellet, if you can believe that. So that's pretty awesome. And we also, we might have lost more Pikmin today than we did on the day that we went to the Citadel of Spiders and Gliders Kitchen. It's tough to tell. Oh, never mind. Maybe. It's... Yeah, it's, it's a really close call. And, uh, some wild animals are nesting under the bridge now. They think I'm their pal or something. My stylish suits are covered in hair. I'm pitiful, but at least they're warm. So that's the president's epic story of love and loss. Well, mostly just loss, loss of his company and his money and his, uh, sense of pride. And now, uh, we should go back to the perplexing pool. You can go back to Valley of Repose now, because honestly, everything in there is open. But because the dungeons there are much tougher than what we're going to do in the Perplexing Pool, it's better to do Perplexing Pool first to warm, to warm up for it. And, um, I have actually devised a better, more strategic plan for this area. Normally, Perplexing Pool takes me five days to finish, but I think this time I can do it in four, probably. So, uh, first things first, we're going to want blues. We're going to grow a lot more blues today, so we have a lot more blues in our party. Uh, because blues are my favorite pick them. And they're just useful because you can explore, like, the water and everything. And we're going to be fighting a lot of water-based enemies this episode as well. Including the Toady Bloister that I couldn't defeat, um... Oh, it was quite some time ago. It was after we got out of the Glutton's Kitchen. I really wanted to defeat it then, uh, through sequence breaking, but I didn't get the chance. And after fighting that Wallywog in Bullax Kingdom, I've come to appreciate just how much weaker yellow ones are by comparison. <laughs> how much weaker those yellow Wallywogs are. Water dumples, on the other hand, I hate these things. These things are just so cruel. Whoa! See, they killed four Pikmin just like that. I hate these things. If you didn't know that already. 
Okay, so we'll set a few Pikmin working on the, that uh, black stick wall. Normally what I would recommend for these uh, walls that are made of the uh, tougher black wood is to use ultra spicy sprays on them because that just tends to get the job done faster. And as I was going to say earlier, but because the president's message interrupted me, I didn't mention it. One Another reason besides growing more Pikmin that you might want to return to the uh, Awakening Wood for is because it's actually a great place for growing ultra bitter, I mean ultra spicy spray as well. This area is better for ultra bitter spray and Awakening Wood is better for ultra spicy spray. Um, however, later on, I think in one of the later dungeons we're going to be going into, there's an even better place for finding ultra bitter spray. So you might be wondering, huh, ultra bitter spray in dungeons? But I thought berry plants didn't grow in them. That's true, but you'll see that there's another way to get bitter sprays which is very efficient. It's from an enemy that we haven't met yet. Um, and actually I won't be able to give you visual evidence, but I'll at least tell you what it is once the time comes. And the reason I have uh, Captain Split up over there is so we can watch his progress on the job. It's going to take a long time for those 20 Pikmin to break down the wall. So while they're doing that, I'm just having uh, Louie raise our blue population. And now that we have a full 100, I'm feeling a bit more confident after going uh, for going after another one of the enemies. It's not particularly more dangerous, but it's going to give us a reward. Number one, it's the, the bloister that holds the treasure. Also, the thing that you get for defeating it gives you a lot more Pikmin. In fact, I think out of all enemies in this game, it gives you probably the thing that gives you the most Pikmin after you defeat it. So without further ado, let's go down and fight it. We might want to defeat the Shearwigs if we haven't already. Yeah, let's take care of them. They are annoying little buggers. I liked them more in the first game. They had a cooler shade of green. In this one, they're kind of like... They're more re I don't know, they look... Grungier. They kind of looked cooler in the first one, in my opinion. There are little details that I like more about the first. Oh, in addition to uh, stuff about the first, and I know this is really technically more about the second, but I was watching... Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that after we fight this guy, because I don't want to interrupt this battle. So just throw them... Stand underneath the bulb and throw them at the bulb. And that's all you have to do to defeat it. If they get in front of its mouth, it'll send out its eight tentacles to eight, eat up to eight Pikmin at once, so be careful of that. And once you defeat it... It actually bleeds out into the water, which I always thought was kind of disgusting. <laughs> but at least that's going to give us a huge uh, boost in our blue Pikmin population. Also, oddly enough, the blue Pikmin aren't coming back into my party. I guess they reacted strangely to the Toady Boyster's blood. Maybe they're just... They're un they're in so much bloodlust right now that they have literally just stopped paying attention to us. So let's just whistle them back into our group. Thank you very much, Lee. Alright. As I was mentioning, um, I saw something kind of cool. Um... Right, I was watching some Pikmin, Pikmin 2 beta videos, and someone actually found, um, hidden in the code, a, uh, a dungeon that was used in the demo version of Pikmin 2, apparently at an E3 convention. And it was really interesting, it was three sub levels deep, it had, um, mostly snow bulborbs and hairy bulborbs. Um, hairy bulborbs haven't been seen yet, so I guess I kind of spoiled them for you. And there were also cloaking burrowits on it, and then later on in the dungeon you encountered lesser spotted jelly floats, another enemy you haven't seen yet. Uh, creating dirge bugs, another enemy you haven't seen yet, and anode beetles, which you've seen. And at the end, instead of a boss, you fight a fiery bolt black. So it was kind of cool to see. Actually, I watched the whole thing. It was really cool. Maybe it was four syllables, not three. And that's our 80% mark right there. Wow, we didn't finish it off in a dungeon for once. And this is a cool little bit here, too. We're inside of a pool. A large rock sits in a reservoir of water. May I interject here? No! I've been observing the two of you working together. You've been cooperating well, as we are at the moment. Yet to face the dangers ahead, you must be free of the shackles of a boss-worker relationship. Learn to use X to separate and Y to change leaders. If you can master teamwork, you can overcome any impediment. Now, there's a reason that he gives you this message for this dungeon right here. We're not going to be going in it at the moment. However, unlike other dungeons, this one is sealed. So you need to break it open using blue Pikmin, obviously because it's underwater. And once they break that... It is a really cool effect, but one that I don't really like too much, because it, it gets rid of the water, then you can't see the awesome lake anymore, and it drains up the water uh, in the pool down into the dungeon below. 